What's going on guys? Welcome to my kitchen, AKA my office. Sorry I haven't filmed, it's been just too boring. Going through all this, bank statements. Yes, I had to file an extension for my taxes for 2017. The deadline is coming up. I think BMAC was doing the same today. Crunching numbers, going through credit card statements and bank statements, trying to find all my out of pocket expenses so they can finalize my 2017 taxes. Today is the last day of the muzzleloader hunt. I was gonna go up and scout. I failed to do that. Been enjoying just sleeping in and getting things done that have to get done. Walker's coming, so I'm gonna grab all my stuff to uh, go hunt with Walker. And tonight is the last day, like I said, for muzzleloader deer hunt in Utah. He said he would love to shoot a buck for meat. So if we can find one of the better bucks that we've seen, he said he'd, he'd try to shoot one just so he can have meat in the freezer he has been really holding out for a big mature buck we just haven't been able to find one but it is stormy outside i don't know if you guys will be able to see the brush it's a blowing so with that being said hopefully some of these bigger deer will be moving tonight fingers crossed that this wind dies down and the deer start moving instead of hiking to our glassing point we're actually going to hike into some of these ridges where we've seen the deer try to get closer because from our glassing point you're not going to be shooting any deer with a muzzleloader change my clothes get my backpack ready and get out of here i'll catch up to you guys on the hill Guys, hello, happy October 4th. Today's a special day in my life. Today is my dad's birthday, Mr. T-Mac. Just wanted to say happy birthday, dad. I appreciate everything you've done for me in my life. Most importantly, uh, just being the rock of our family, always being there for anything I've ever needed or wanted. Certainly have taught me a whole heck of a lot about the outdoors, about hunting, about public land and wild places and conservation and wild food and all of these things that have become a real important component of who I am today at uh, 40 plus years of age. So wishing you all the best. I can't wait to see you. And I think with any luck, you're going to be able to join for, uh, for a hunt this fall. So love you lots and big old happy birthday. Just got home from Casey's place. We had an amazing time in Wyoming. Really hope you guys liked the Wyoming series. The girls did such a great job. It's so fun seeing young teenage kids get involved in the outdoors and hunting. They kept their composure. They made good shots. They got to experience kind of what it's like to pack an animal out on your back and the hard work that goes with that and the reward that that is when you get to the truck. And then see the whole process of breaking down the animal, butchering the meat. Really, really fun time with the folks at Weatherby, Adam, Kevin, Luke. Hope you guys can tell by the video, but they're all such great people. And then uh, good old Ryan Callahan. I know a lot of you guys have seen him on the Meat Eater program or listened to him on the Meat Eater podcast, or maybe you went to one of the live events that Steve and the crew do. But Ryan's a great guy. So much to learn from him. He's uh, very, very passionate about wild food. Obviously you saw he had us try some unique things in the field and uh, about conservation and public lands. He's just a really fantastic ambassador for our industry. And we feel very, very fortunate to be able to work with great people like him and all the folks at Weatherby. I mean, there's just a common bond uh, when we have a chance to get out there in the field with a lot of the folks we work with. Just good quality individuals. They have a lot of the same philosophies in life and hunting and uh, man, it's just a, an awesome time. If any of you guys have hunted Colorado recently, particularly mule deer, you would have received this in the mail. Here's an example of uh, taking action. It would have been really easy to throw this away, but I don't have anything to complain about down the road if I don't take action and participate. So they wanting information on CWD as uh, this becomes a big issue for deer, elk, and moose. It's a disease that does not have any kind of a cure and it gets transferred from animal to animal. And when you get it as a deer um, or an elk or a moose, you die. It continues to be a big problem spreading all over the place, but Colorado is wanting feedback from hunters and anglers on what we think Colorado Fish and Wildlife should do to help remove it from some of the populations of deer in particular. They want to know about what education levels we have of CWD and what type of communication is being suggested from 
Colorado Parks and Wildlife either via social media, through the regulations, through word of mouth, Google searches, you name it. Just trying to get a general gauge on what do we know about CWD? Would it impact your decision to hunt Colorado in the future? Advice on how they should try to manage some of the herds where it has popped up. So a pretty comprehensive series of questions. From everything as to why you hunt, to potential concerns about CWD, to would you kind of hunt in Colorado, depending on various scenarios. So I'm gonna get that finished off and put it in the mail. Colorado's a great place to hunt. We've had a ton of fun doing, it, doing so, and I, I certainly hope that our opinions and our feedback gets uh, listened to and they're able to make a good decision on how they should manage the wildlife moving forward. We got the packs loaded. Running out of time. Looks like you brought us some Chick-fil-A. Thanks. Gotta be energized up here, man. You gonna shoot a buck? Yes. Most likely if one shows itself, it's the last day of the hunt, so anything we see we'll probably put down. I want the meat, good stuff for the rest of the year. Hopefully there's some deer moving. It's been tough all hunt, but you never know. Big 200 with cheaters can just walk over the ridge. All right guys, we are up on the hill now, dropping down from where we typically glass. Figured if we're gonna shoot something, we kinda gotta get in the middle of everything, get a lot closer. Super windy, I'm sure you can tell. A little chilly, it's starting to rain. Try to get in position and we'll only have about an hour of daylight to work with, so here we go. There's Walker Boss. <laughs> We're gonna have fun regardless. for we wanted cooler weather here it is final day final evening final hour and a half let's do this got to get this camera put away real quick though it's getting soaked I think you missed. He's running. Reload just in case. No dice. <laughs> Where's it going? I don't know, dude. That's all our. That's everything, huh? That'll be great, hunt. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. We don't know. We don't know where that thing's hitting. Well, there's Walker and his 2018 buck <laughs> in the background there. 
decided to let this one go. There he is, Walker's 2018. All right guys, that's it. It was a fun little hunt. We had last <laughs> evening, last chance. Got up here in the rain, got Walker an opportunity at a buck that we had seen. Yeah, double throat patch. Double throat patch buck. The weather was looking nasty. I'm happy it didn't keep down for us. That was a bummer. We were getting wet. <laughs> Well, we held it out and uh, got in position and that buck stood up. The first shot was 224. He's a 3x4 and then the other buck, I didn't look closely, but I'm guessing he's just a two point. After that, he just ran over the top of the skyline ridge and we just kind of sat there and watched him go over the hill. And really didn't sweat it <laughs> just because we were just up here for fun. Honestly, that was one of the bigger bucks up here that we had seen all week. Him and the three point that I saw when you weren't here. So that deer will live another day. Yeah, I don't think I'll lose any sleep over it, but no. it's still fun, great. Love being out here with my brother. Yeah. It's always fun, man. Just out here laughing and... I know, we're always just <laughs> cracking jokes. The whole time we sit in glass, we're just laughing. I'm surprised we see anything <laughs> as much as we laugh, but... Already looking forward for next year, man. I know. It is the only tag that Walker has right now. Is I have an open, open bull rifle tag. I could head down to southern Utah or I can stick around these parts. We're just not seeing many elk up here. But hope you guys enjoyed that video. We're taking the memories with us and we're taking everything we learned from the hunt with us on this one. So we'll see you guys later. Walker, any final words? Thanks for watching guys. Sorry I couldn't put one on the video for you, but it's always next year, huh? See you later, Mountain. Good morning, how are we? How we doing? How you feeling? Looking up. Guys, we just got home from Wyoming. And if you watch the video of me shooting the antelope, I was off. I was consistently 10 inches to the right. And we couldn't figure out if it was the wind. I don't think it was the wind. I think my gun got bumped on the way over here. Lesson learned. I got the antelope killed, just not the way a hunter would want it to go down. I had to shoot him twice. I just don't like to see him suffer. So we are gonna go to the range and we're gonna shoot the 257 weather bee and see what's going on. I'm also gonna pack the six and a half by 300 and make sure that's on. I have a deer hunt that starts on the 10th. I need to get ready and we're gonna go shoot some guns. Come along with us. What's up guys? Today, October 5th, first day after the muzzleloader deer hunt ended. It is the day before the rifle general season. Any bull elk hunt opens. This year, Utah came out with what they call a multi-season tag. It allows you to hunt archery, rifle, and muzzleloader for the open bull areas. Costs like 150 bucks, so you pay for the you pay for the tag, but it gives you uh, all different seasons to hunt. And uh, tomorrow's opening day of rifle hunt, which I'm kind of torn if I want to go out or not. Today has just been super mellow. I haven't got a lot done around the house, but I did finish my taxes. The room now that Walker's hunt is over is a complete disaster once again. If I fill up for it, I'll wake up tomorrow and just go try to shoot an open bull. But here in Utah, you can either choose a spike tag or any bull. And with that being said. You, there are certain units that are specific to one or the other and the units I'll hunt are, are open bull So I can shoot a spike. I can shoot a branch antler bull shoot a big bull This is a hunt I did a couple years ago with Chad Mendez If you guys are following the channel back then we did a semi live series on the open bull hunt and we both shot bull elk Pretty fun hunt and there's still a lot of people that comment and compliment me on that series with Chad And they'd like to see us to hunt again and hopefully we can so next year We'll make it happen. Let's let's all hope that we can. You guys go bug Chad on his channel and tell me you want to see a Hushin collaboration. I'm going to go through all my hunting stuff and I'll probably pack up for tomorrow. I'll most likely go. Now it's time to go get a workout. Put this Mountain Ops Yeti per workout to use. And we'll come back and take care of all that stuff soon. Shot the 257 four times. I felt definitely the third shot. I pulled it. I felt it. And then um, the first two were real good, just uh, low. And then the third one I pulled. I shot a fourth one. It's kind of low and to the right still. So this is one. This is two. This is three out here in right field. And this is kind of out there as well. So I'm just gonna bump the scope up. Two clicks. See if we can get it right in here. 300 yards. I'm trying to zero it at 300. Yeah. Before I was shooting, I was. I, I felt like maybe I was a little right, but it was just such a little slight amount that I didn't change it. But these two felt the very best to me. Like I said, the wind's probably blowing 15 from our back, so it's a little hard to hold still. But I'm gonna bump it up and see if we can't put a couple right in there. 
we are going to shoot the six and a half. My next hunt is a deer hunt, and uh, I'm going to shoot the six and a half for it. So Logan's going to do the honors. One glove on. Not Have you ever shot a gun before? Uh-uh. So he's going to shoot the six and a half at 100 and make sure it's on. And then, uh, yeah, see, see, I haven't shot that gun since last year. Look, yeah, you have to push down here. Oh, I got her. Oh, it. See, yeah. tricks. All on my own. Tricks and tips. Hi, what can I get for you? Can I get a bacon hamburger? Uh, so no cheese, just a bacon burger and a combo meal. That's it. Is that everything? Yep. Very nice and lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. It's a hamburger and fry kind of night. I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown on my fitness situation. So I'm sure some of you have seen, uh, we've done the Mountain Ops 90 Day Challenge. It started April 1st on my birthday. So it was all of April, May, June. My goal was to get in the best shape I could for the hunting season. And I did. I lost 20 something pounds and that's a lot for me. So at my all time high, I weighed 194 pounds and I got down to like below 170. Here's the thing with me and my fitness battle every single year. Starting about December, January-ish, I start going to the gym every single day because I'm home a lot more from the hunts. In those months, I want to sleep more and eat carbs. Here in Utah, it's super cold. The, the things that sound good to me are carbs and rest. But I work out a lot and I work out heavy. I get really strong during those months. And then in the summer months, when it's hot and it's like 100 degrees, 90 degrees, I crave healthy food. Protein shakes, it's easier for me to eat. You know, just like scrambled eggs real quick barbecuing, use the smoker, use the camp chef, and have meat and vegetables. Very low carb diet in the summer. So here's the battle I go through every every year. December, January, February, I'm eating heavy, I'm lifting heavy, I'm working out a lot. Uh, through the summer months, I'm, I'm working out a lot, I'm becoming more active as the days are longer, the days are warmer, I'm hiking, I'm scouting, and I'm starting to burn more calories. On top of that, I'm eating less carbs. So I burn fat and I get ready for the hunts. I go into the hunts, in great shape great condition and then as the hunts come I slowly transition into that fall those fall bad habits eating out eating on the road from hunt and just being gone not eating consistently you know my meals aren't timed through the day I'm not prepping anything I'm eating snacks out of the backpack all day on top of that I am hiking my butt off August September and a lot of October those hunts are really high active hunts so I'm walking a lot starting right now I slowly start doing this eating out it catches up to me through the winter months big time and I usually weigh the most right leading up to shed hunting season and then as I start becoming more active I start uh, burning more fat Anyways, I thought I'd tell you guys that's where I'm at with my little fitness journey. Of course, I'm still using my Mountain Ops products on the mountain at home. Look at my buddy. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is, but we have so many random cats around here. And they all love to come visit. Come here, buddy. This one's a new one. Hey, kitty, come here. Come say what up. You're on the YouTubes. <laughs> this one is the most friendly. Come here. I didn't mean to scare you. Come here. This is the most friendly, fluffy one yet. And he just loves to explore this place. Now it's time to get ready for tomorrow's hunt. Organize this mess. I have two, di three different backpacks out. And the shooting stuff from uh, shooting the muzzleloader at the range. I have to clean the muzzleloader. For my elk hunt tomorrow, I'm going to be shooting my 3378, my Weatherby. Which, by the way, I need to open this. This was sent to me. It's from Weatherby. It's marked as fragile. It's... Definitely not a gun because those have to be sent to an FFL. They have to be sent to like a licensed uh, gun dealer. My guess is it's like some type of rifle case. Looks like someone had to get creative and extend the box. All right, let's see what it is. Check it out. New Weatherby rifle gun case. So BMAC told me that our, our first light fusion Weatherbees are in. Oh look, a bunch of swag. Oh, please say that's a hoodie. Sweater weather. Got a hoodie, t-shirt, and uh, looks like another t-shirt. 
Weatherby's done a good job of making some lifestyle apparel. I'm excited about that gray shirt and that hoodie. Nice little gift from Weatherby, so thank you guys, everybody at Weatherby. Thanks for the gift. It's time to get ready for the hunt. Some crazy annoying TV show is on. I need to change that to Pandora so I can focus and uh, get ready for tomorrow's hunt.